Let's go. Are you kidding me? Guys, I'm going to need your help. You're looking at Noah Kane, the Penn State transfer from Baton Rouge. Will he be the new RB1 or will it be John Emery? And you see here, Noah Kane breaking off a long 30 plus yard run. All this is all this explosiveness would do the LSU offense some good. And look, John Emery is also joined by a long list of running backs in that room. Take a look at this. Not only can Noah Kane potentially run out of the backfield, he also has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield. This is a huge third down conversion in a tight game. The season opening game, might I add, versus Wisconsin. And he not only makes this guy miss, he's able to pick up the first down after making this catch. Some really impressive stuff from Noah Kane out of the backfield. Then a little scary. Look at that. Ah, ah, ah. A little nice cut back. He's got the Alvin Kamara turf tape on the back of the arms. And we're not done from this Noah Kane breakdown, okay? We're going to keep the film rolling here. It is second and 10. It is a 10-10 ball game. And look at Sean Clifford deciding to take this check down right here. And look, we need Noah Kane right here to make this linebacker miss. Uh, obviously, we just did a film breakdown of Wisconsin's defense versus Jaden Daniels. And look at this really impressive stuff right there by Noah Kane to make this guy miss. And then once again, look at this stop-start ability. A little shimmy to get around uh, number 50 right here. And he's able to keep his balance and pick up a few extra yards before taking a big hit. And we're not done yet. Noah Kane actually took over. And by the way, all these are basically fourth-quarter breakouts right here from Noah Kane. In a big spot for his team, he finds a way to grind out this touchdown run. This is some decent blocking, but even better running right here by Noah Kane, as you could see from the sky cam. 79's kind of getting reestablished at this line of scrimmage. Good job by these tight ends to squeeze and create this little gap right here for Kane to run through. We need you to break this tackle right here and push your way into the end zone. And as you can see, Kane did a good job keeping his feet and finding a way to score right there. Boom! Now this is where things get really interesting, and I'm going to need your help. So, I understand LSU's running back room is really deep. I'm still really high on Armani Goodwin if he's able to get healthy. Corey Kiner has been the healthiest of these backup running backs we'll discuss briefly here, but even he had some bang-ups and nick-ups from last season, so we hope to get him back fully healthy, and you still have Trey Bradford and Josh Williams in the room, and obviously Trey Bradford himself had a very mysterious comeback to LSU, and he also had some injuries. So, once again, the likelihood that all four of those backs we just mentioned stay with LSU next season is actually pretty low. I hope all four of them stay, but for the sake of this video, we are mostly just going to focus on Noah Kane and John Emery because if you were to guess which one of those running backs would end up being the guy, you would probably guess one of these two names. You look at this run again right here by Noah Kane. It's just really, really good play design. This tight end draws both of these defenders, but this is just such a good read by Kane. This B gap gets obliterated by this defensive tackle, and instead of just running it right up here, Kane sees that this cutback angle opens up, and now it's just a foot race to get to the goal line, and he's able to finish off this run very nice. So, Let's just do a comparison of Noah Kane and our guy, John Emery. So the first thing is John Emery and Noah Kane are about the same age. And on top of that, they were a part of the same recruiting class along with Ty Davis Price. Now, LSU, of course, they would have loved Noah Kane. He was from Baton Rouge. He did transfer to IMG Academy in Florida. But still, LSU ended up getting TDP and John Emery and Noah Kane decided to go to Penn State and it looked as if this decision was the right one for Noah Kane because here he is on the road at Kinnick Stadium as a true freshman in a ranked matchup in state trying to go to the college football playoff and they were able to remain undefeated after winning this really close game a game in which Iowa actually dominated they outgained Penn State by a pretty wide margin but 
Penn State was able to score when it counted, and that included Noah Kane making this big crunch time run. While he didn't flash it a whole lot, this is going to be the third time you've seen on this film study Noah Kane catching a football out of the backfield and not making one tackler miss, but two, okay? Yes, this is Ball State, but watch him break this tackle very easily, not really slowing him down at all, and then watch this right here. This is really impressive stuff. He was dead to rights by that guy, just breaks right through an arm tackler, and he gets a good block right there by 86, and he gains a few extra yards. So, up to this point, I'm going to give not one, but two major leg ups to Noah Kane. The first, obviously, crunch time running ability, and the second is pass catching out of the backfield. Now, if you look at their total receptions and yards, they're not really all that far off from one another, but the difference, though, is Noah Kane is probably better in pass protection. We've done a few John Emery film studies up to this point showing his major issues in pass protection, and it's tough, you know, as an offensive coordinator to trust a running back if they can be major liabilities in pass protection. And ironically, John Emery missed a major assignment in this Alabama game. But this is where John Emery begins to show the leg up over Noah Kane. It's just the high ceiling that he possesses. Good cutback here. He did get away with the little hold right here on Chase and Heights. Who cares? He gets really good blocking. Good block right there by AG2. And obviously, John Emery is off to the races. So as far as ceiling is concerned, John Emery's ceiling is still through the roof just as a runner and just as someone with the football in his hands, going out there and making a home run hitter type of play. Now, something else that is very important to keep in mind is both LSU and Penn State have struggled to run the football. Last year, both teams were outside the top 100 at a paltry 3.3 yards per rush, which obviously isn't that good. But still, for the most part, John Emery just has flashed more wow type of plays such as this one so that's the thing we go back to Noah Kane and remember that very first run versus Wisconsin that was a pretty good 30 plus yard run but it was perfectly blocked if you don't believe me go back and watch the clip and what you're going to see here this actually ended up being his only other run on the season that went for 12 yards or more and as you'll see here against Arkansas, it's practically the same play you saw versus Wisconsin. It's perfectly blocked, and all Kane has to do is carry out the play. And as you see, new LSU defensive back Joe, big play Fusha, who had a really big game versus Penn State, is able to make this tackle. So it took absolutely perfectly blocked plays for Noah Kane to break off long runs. And that is, to me, what I think was what eventually turned James Franklin off of Noah Kane last year. So, yes, Noah Kane had that huge performance versus Wisconsin, but after that, his backups, per se, started to outperform him as far as yard per carry is concerned and just explosive playmaking ability. And as you see here, there's just not a whole lot of explosive runs that Noah Kane was able to break off. Now, ironically, him and John Emery have the same amount of, of 15 yard or more rushes in their career so both of them have had a little bit of an issue of explosiveness but the difference though is Noah Kane has had three years of playing experience and John Emery has only had two so you saw the numbers there where Lee the running back at Penn State just outperformed Kane and if that wasn't the case Kane probably wouldn't have transferred he probably would have stayed and Penn State, of course, is bringing in Nicholas Singleton, a really, really good running back from the class of 2022. So, you know, that's part of the reason why Kane came over to Baton Rouge is because, well, he just got beat out. And I also think getting out of that James Franklin offense would be very good for Noah Kane. More on that in just a second. But what I want to show you here is, to me, just the most special run of the John Emery era okay now once again this is 2019 Arkansas they're tired we're obviously we already put a 50 burger on him up to this point first thing obviously Emory sees that this guy's filling this B gap right here so he knows he's got to cut back so he plants and gets vertical really quickly and here he is going head up against 
one of the best linebackers in the SEC, Drew Morgan, and he just barrels right through him. But this is even more impressive right here. Once again, I understand the Arkansas defense is very tired, but just the acceleration to beat four to the pylon here, this is just John Emery at his absolute peak. You could just see the speed right here, and I understand this is slow motion, but for this guy to just not even really get a good lick on him just shows you John Emery's overall explosiveness. So, once again, it's just that ceiling that you're just praying to see next year. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Who do I prefer? Of course, you're looking at a bunch of responses on a community post, which is why you need to subscribe and ring the bell because we do a lot of these community posts and I use a lot of your feedback on these posts to help form my own opinion, which is why we also do live streams where we have free-flowing open discussions about LSU tackle football. So, you know, you're looking at all these responses, and the first thing I'll say is there's two extra little variables that comes into this equation that honestly have very little to do with either one of their playing abilities. The first is health, right, and just overall availability. The first thing is, as far as injury history is concerned, both of them have it, which is is pretty common for most SEC running backs. A lot of SEC running backs go through injury issues during their career, but John Emery's have not been nearly as severe as Noah Kane. Now, Kane had a season-ending ending, season ending gruesome lower leg injury on the first drive of the game in 2020 versus Indiana. It was on field turf. We've talked about this plenty of times, how much I hate field turf. But still, it was a very unfortunate thing. And the thing was, was Noah Kane's best attribute wasn't explosiveness before the injury. And after the injury, I think he did lose some of the explosiveness that he already had, which in turn made him less explosive, which is why you saw the lack of 15-yard runs and just, quite frankly, the lack of 10 yard runs he only had three total last year now once again i have talked about this plenty of times the james franklin offense isn't really all that good and i think brian kelly's run-based offense next year is going to be a little bit better for running backs with mike dimbrock helping out calling the play so yeah you know i i think a change of scenery is really good for noah kane but Overall, you do worry about that injury and where he is right now as a player, where John Emery last year didn't play at all, but he still practiced, he still showed up, and he still, you know, came out, showed out, and, and practiced pretty much every day with LSU, hoping that he could get academically eligible. There's another extra little nugget, and we always give you one at the end of every video. Now, this just happens to be your first time watching the channel, we always like to give one little extra thing. Running backs probably don't matter as much as you as much as you think that they do, right? Of course, you have the Leonard Fournettes, you have the Jeremy Hills, you have the Derrick Henrys. Those guys really do move the needle, but not many do. There have been plenty of analytical studies, more so in the NFL than even in college, but the truth is run blocking and run concepts are far more important than the running back itself. In other words, if LSU doesn't have a good offensive line and great play calling next year, it doesn't matter who your running back is going to be. And you saw last year, TDP got better when we started running counter instead of running zone on every play. Once again, we're not going to get too much into the ins and out of what that actually means, but still, the concepts got fresher and more creative as the season moved on, which in turn made TDP's numbers a lot better. Also, Ed Ingram started to play better as the season moved on, and that obviously turned out to be a huge difference maker for LSU. So maybe Noah Kane or John Emery, that's not as important as us getting all the other things ready to go. And the second thing, who the quarterback's going to be is also very important because if you have a running quarterback, it does help out with the zone read game if you tend to want to do that with your quarterback as well. And I also want to say this. I do think they're pretty close, So, and I think the other four guys can also get some carries next year. It may not matter. It may just come down to who those five guys are along with who the tight end may be. Uh, do we have enough 
running concepts to get our guys holes to run through that to me is the more important question now here's what we're going to do i'll link down below the exact time steps of both our justin vincent and jeremy hill interviews where you can get their opinion on the current lsu running back room also floating in your face in just a second i will post the john emory pass protection film study right here and if you want Jaden Daniels film study playlist it'll be floating in the top left corner of your screen we've done two film studies right there it is power our LSU boom ooh tonight oh, we're doing some grilled chicken let's go 